Hello students. All right. In this video, we're going to do some basic matrix operations. So we're going to solve a system of equations and we're going to find some eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now, if you have not uh, seen the introduction to SAGE uh, video um, or are not familiar with SAGE, at least how to load files and start files, uh, you should watch those videos first. All right. So uh, remember to use shift enter to implement a sage command. So I have that here. And um, that I wrote with um, this part, this text of code, so that you can switch that cell on and off just by clicking on these arrows. And you can see how I use the um, percent HTML command here to put in that uh, sentence. All right, now we're going to define a matrix. This is going to be a three by three matrix. Now this is going to be an object. So here's how this works. We're going to take this list of numbers. Let me create a new cell. I did that by clicking on this thick blue bar. And this is just simply a list of numbers. If I hit shift enter, there it is. That's just a list of numbers. Now notice that there are nine numbers in this list. And if I do a three by three matrix, this is going to be uh, one, three, zero will be the top row, 450 will be the second row, and 031 will be the third row. That's signified by the 3, 3 here. That tells me the, dimensions, the dimension of the matrix. Now, if I were to somehow screw this up and not get the dimension right, of course, I would get an error. But um, let's just execute this uh, properly at first, all right? So um, let me just get rid of those two lines for a moment. So I'm going to define um, the matrix to be A. Now, without the A as the definition, I won't be able to call this matrix later. It's just there's the matrix. But if I assign it to A, A will now be the matrix. However, you might be wondering what happened to the A. In order to get the A back, I can either do a semicolon A, and it'll print the A, or I can do A in the next line, and there it is. Another way to define a matrix is um, just by Notice I have two brackets here. So here's the outer bracket. Let me erase this. Let me cut that first. So here's an outer bracket. And then the inner bracket are the three rows of the A matrix. And there's another way to define A. Now, A is an object. That means that it has, if I hit type A dot, it has a bunch of methods. I will hit the tab key now, and you can see a list of the methods that are available to me. And we will use some of these. Uh, let's try I. Nope. There we go. I hit something to it. So that is A dot I will give me A inverse. Another way to compute the inverse is by the inverse method, A dot inverse. Now, if you have a question on any of these uh, matters, you can type in something like A dot and let's say you find something that's interesting. Like, let's say you didn't know what inverse was, but you thought it was interesting and you wanted to know more about it. Um, you could put in a inverse, a dot inverse, and then question mark. You hit shift enter, and it gives you some help on that command. Okay. If I just hit the delete key, that will get rid of that command there. So I'm going to get rid of this. And notice that if we go with a times a inverse, I should get the identity matrix, and sure enough, I do. Now, we're going to solve a linear system of equations. So um, let's solve the system AX equals B. Well, we need a right-hand side. For a right-hand side, I can define a vector. Now, I could define B as a 3 by 1 matrix if I wanted. Um, and, you know, so it could be, I can define B as a vector. But, um, like I said, I could also define um, B as a matrix that is three by one. It's the right dimension, right? And let's see, what was this? 6, 15, 24. And there it is. Um, so that will automatically get that in there. But I'm going to leave the B as a vector here. And to solve a system, um, I can use the backslash operator that you see here. And you could think of this as, you know, if you had AX equals B, to solve for x, you would multiply each side of the equation by the inverse of a, and the um, 
<clears throat> so you'd be multiplying a backslash b where the backslash leans in the direction of a inverse. Anyhow, this will give you a way to solve the system. Another way, of course, is you could just multiply x equals a inverse times b if you wanted. There's another way, I just want to show this to you because this is actually pretty cool. You could do um, a dot, and then I'm going to start to type in solve. Now you're going to have two solves, solve left and solve right. The one we actually want is solve right. Now, if you have any questions about that, you can hit the question mark, shift enter. This will solve ax equals b. Solve left would be x times a equals b. Um, so the right... Uh, corresponds to the x being on the right. So we're going to solve right, and then the argument I'm going to put in there is the right-hand side b. I'll hit Shift-Enter. And for some reason it jumped me down here. I have no idea why. Anyways, there it is again. So that's the solution. Um, okay, and then of course, uh, we know that x is equal to this vector, so if I multiply a times x, I should get b back again, which is 6, 15, 24. All right, I'm going to take a pause here, and uh, this will be part one of this video, and I'm going to create a second part where we will start to get into um, row, reduc uh, row reduced uh, echelon form and eigenvalues and eigenvectors. All right, good luck.